I did this video a few days ago and just re-listened to it and heard, had a few different ideas and I thought I could explain things a little better. So I usually don't like to re-record the same thing because every time you re-watch something there's always some things that you didn't think about or you hear things that uh, you might have missed and can do. But I feel like this one is kind of, you know, it's an important one because uh, I know it's a very popular piece and I just want to do the best job of it that I can. So I'm going to go through this again uh, and we will probably look as well at the Revolutionary Etude uh, by Chopin. Uh, maybe even the number eight of the childhood scenes. The Fireside. Okay, so without further ado, number seven Schumann childhood scenes, Dreaming, Ravery. Here we go. So let's look at this. Okay. When Schumann wrote these pieces, uh, it is said that his lover and dear wife, Clara, uh, told him that he uh, sometimes looked like a child. And then he wrote these pieces, but he wrote 31 of them, and he took his 13 favorites. And there's some, you know, these are from letters. There's some letter where he, he said, uh, he referred to them as scribbles on the page. I think you can find that uh, even on Wikipedia. It's kind of ironic that what he referred to as scribbles on a page, this would end up being his most famous composition, I believe, of, of, of all this uh, dreaming. So, okay, there we have it. Okay, that is said. And this. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and say right away, the number one issue that I see is when people are doing these grace notes, this note here ends up being late. Now, let me explain. It's okay if we slow down and you don't have to. You could back off or take a little time here, you know. Maybe we'd draw this like this. Take a little time. But do not uh, delay this note in a non-musical way because it, you're just not fast enough playing those notes at the bottom. So if you just play the melody, let's see, it should go up to here. Even if that note is a little late because you're slowing down, it shouldn't go Ba, ba, and that's the mistake I hear most often here, okay? If you're a really uh, advanced pianist, maybe you have that taken care of. We'll get into the advanced things, don't worry. So, see how we took a little bit of time, and we could take more. That's also okay, as long as you don't do Right? So, some pianists, I, my, one of my favorite recordings of these uh, Schumann Childhood Seeds is Arthur Schnabel, and you can find that on YouTube, the YouTube, and as long with other places for sure. And he does this. Maybe even a little faster. So, you know, I don't think I would do it that way. It's just so you know you have those options. It doesn't have to be so clear-cut. It could be one way or another. I personally prefer to do this B at the same time as the F up there. Uh, okay, so I hope that makes sense. I hope I explained that in a way that makes uh, sense here. Now, question about the pedal. In the Henley edition, it doesn't say pedal here. It says, and this just says with pedal, by the way, it's not even saying what to do with that pedal, but we could put in the Henley, it says pedal here, and then it says pedal here. I'm not sure that this pedal is really necessary, but you can definitely put the pedal from the first note. The idea here is that the C, the first note, 
you will leave. So on the first beat of the first bar, we don't have only F, the C is already there. You see that? Here we go to here, take time. Okay, lots of stuff here. So that pedal, if you like that, you can put it there so that this C basically just continues here like this. Okay, I prefer here as a fingering two three one two three one two five and then a two up here i think that's a much better fingering for this of course there's the issue of balance right so if you haven't fixed that already make sure your f is louder and this is within that sound and now, two, three, one, two, five. I like to take a little time here. Stretch this long note a little bit. Do a little wait here before going on. So. Isn't that nice? It gives us a little feeling of suspension there, which is extraordinary. It will make you actually feel like you're dreaming. It's true. <laughs> it's a kind of hypnotic effect when we distort the rhythm like that. So again, let's make this clear. If we're counting and we're doing it on time, it sounds like this. And four and one and two, three, four and one. If you stretch the note, it will sound something like this. And four and one and two, three. Four and one. See how that third beat that's kind of in an empty space is is really far. You know, it's it's really stretched out. Oh, two, three, and four and one. And now, okay, here's how I like it. All right, I'll show you how I like it. Look at the little phrase markings that Schumann wrote here. Uh, let me verify actually in the Henley edition. Yeah, there are some differences here. Uh, in the Hanley, this is written like this. So I think that's probably the urtext, right? Is that phrases like that? But often the way the phrases are written, even if they're wrong, it, it makes sense, right? But let's think of this. You have this little thing here. Uh, ti -da -da -dum. And then you have this little one. Ya -da -da -dum. That's the second part of this phrase. And then this one has five notes. Ya da da di dum. It's a little longer, at least for the melody. Okay. Now, how do we bring that out? That's the question: is how to bring that out. I like to do. If you suspend that long note, you do a little wait here, like we said. Then start the E D C in a crescendo, so it has a, a movement to it and do not put an accent on that F. So relax that end. That's not an accent, that's a diminuendo. Same thing for the second one. Ya da da di ta da. Don't put an accent on the last note, the D. And take a little time there. That's the place to take time. And then ya da da di dum. Go to there. And what I like to do is actually don't stop until you get to this note in the left hand. Okay, so how does that sound? Here's how that sounds. We have a suspension here. A lot of little things in here. We're going to go over that a few times, okay? A few times. So here we go. Take time. And then... So see how we started this a little softer to go to the C. And then what you don't want is... We don't want to accentuate that. We want to show that it's the 
the end or the tail, a tiny tail of our micro fragment. It's only four notes. And then this one as well. Same thing. We don't want. You could do a little crescendo to this B flat, right? And then don't go like that. Go all the way to here. In fact, as I said, I like to not stop until the second C in the left hand. So I'm sure some people who are inclined to play things in a very Russian way would like to do. That's okay, you know, you can do that. I like it better, a more classical way here. Go to here and here and Okay. Now, what about that time just before starting that third fragment of the phrase? Um, the whole phrase, you know, is this whole first line, okay? So it's these are fragments of the second half of the large phrase, which goes something. If we can draw this, why don't we put it in blue? It would look a little like this. You know, I should probably put that peak. Yeah, that's fine. That works like that, right? Okay, so that's our big phrase. So back to this. Two. Okay, do you see the time that we took right here? I'm gonna put a weight here. There's our little W. We took a little time before starting that. So again, if you don't take time, it sounds like this. Okay, if you take time. Okay, so we like it that way. <laughs> it's really nice. You know, maybe even a tiny little time uh, to start this the second one as well it's really a micro amount of time that we're taking and really all that's happening is we're just finishing each of those small fragments finish finish and then it's up to you to see how much is too much that's the the very tricky thing is these are such subtleties that it's very easy to do too much you know Maybe I'm even doing too much right now. You shouldn't have to think about it too much. See how subtle that was? Second time now. Same thing with the fingerings. Two, three, one, two, five, five. So see, once again, we slowed down took time here, which is okay, and you don't have to. Let's do that nicer, like this. A little squiggly line means take time. But we didn't delay that last note in a non-musical way for technical reasons. Like that. That's the mistake I keep hearing. And then you go to here. Yeah, I think that F sharp and the F natural, we should bring them out a little bit here. Okay. Okay, and then this repeats. So if you're really smart, you'll do something different. Maybe could be without slowing down. That's a more, that's a less romantic way of playing it. And maybe
maybe you bring out a little of the left hand here. Ye They're both important. one here we're also stretching out this gives a nice feeling of suspension put a little weight there now when you stretch out the notes let's do like Leon Fleischer would say here uh, play as late as you can without being too late so you don't want to be too late <laughs> maybe that's too much up to you to find that out. But that's definitely nicer than not waiting at all. See how uninteresting that version in comparison to the other is. So a little suspension here. like to sing this E a little bit. There we go. Okay, and another thing I hear a lot is people wanting to rush this. Don't rush that. As we said, don't stop until that C, stay in rhythm but don't rush what comes after. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. These notes go together. Okay, now let's go on. Okay, so we had that four times. And now we have it a fifth time going into the middle section. Uh, let's do this like this. Okay, so that's how I like it. And I think uh, if you listen to the recording with Schnabel, you'll hear something similar. So give this a little crescendo as he writes here and ya da dee dee, ta dee dee. And then do a long dim here all the way to this one in B flat with a, a little piano here, let's say. Something quieter, more special. This is the special one here. Okay. So, and it's the first time we have it in a different key. Okay. So here's the build up to here. Let's, uh, if I modify this, if I may, slightly, let's say the uh, diminuendo starts there, okay? You can sustain uh, this T da da dum because it's a long diminuendo. So the, these notes here can still be uh, a little loud or as loud as this less and less less and less less and less all the way to here okay so once more this middle part build up to here sustain and come down gradually like a leaf falling Remember, we're dreaming here. This time with a grace note. So you can do whatever you want with that little section there. That's, kind of, that's really a special moment in this piece. I think there's something a little more meaningful 
about the the B flat one. That's the second one. There's some extra truth to it, if that makes sense, rather than this one. This one is a little concerning, yeah? We're a little concerned about something. Uh, a little bit um, dérangé, uh, disturbed. And relax it. And now it's like you hear some important truth, but you're not even so... so sure of it, or maybe even aware of it, because you're dreaming. So that's how, that's how I like it today, at least, you know? But I'm sure some people will play this one stronger. So I'm just suggesting here that this one here could be more of the stronger one, and this one a little bit more special, a little bit more. I'm going to put mezzo piano that's not different enough than, uh, let's just put a piano here. It's not different enough than mezzo forte, but some... That's nice because we could get it through here. It's only a an eighth note, but I think you should hold it there. Tuddy, um, this time with a grace note. Okay, and then uh, same thing. That's another way of doing it, right? You could take time to uh, da 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 um, like that. That's nice, you know. What we did this time, just to explain it on paper, we took time here and then put these two Fs kind of together. That's also possible. Here's for the big hands, people. You're going to do this. Take those two with a thumb. And if you don't have such big hands, well, you can do something like this. And that's just as nice, right? That's very nice. Makes sense to take time there and roll that if you don't have big hands. Alternatively, I don't like that as much. I think you can just get your pinky out of the way here if this is too big for you and roll what's in the left hand as it is and then in the right hand that those three notes and then go get that last one on the top there with the left hand, okay, for small hands. So here we go, that's the last time. And two. I wouldn't do this so loud, right? I've heard. It's not uh, it's not dreamlike enough, let's put it that way. <laughs> two, three, one, two. Yes, the two, three here is, you know, is much better. Funny they got the one, two there. Yes, it's a little different. The other thing to consider is because the second half of this part da -da 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 -dee -dee, does that change something in the first part, right? Since this is different from what we had before, does that change the way we play this? 
Maybe. It's something to think about. If you already, when you're at this part, you have in your mind that it's going to do this later, you might play this a little differently. Especially as you get closer to it, um, you're thinking about that chord coming up. Okay, I think I like it like this today, uh, at least, guys. So, you know, let's say we're taking time there. And then, and the phrase markings are incorrect here. This is correct. This is correct. And this is in under one slur. So if you look in the Henley, I can't really show this to you, but it is there. Yeah, I could kind of show it. See, that is one phrase marking, just so you know. It's not... Uh, split up as it is on the internet edition. Let's call it that, right? So, t da da da. -da. Yeah, I'm always inclined to do this like this, but I often like to hear what would this sound like as well, right? So, what's the difference between start soft, do a crescendo? That's my favorite. Otherwise, that's a little different, okay? Again, this is how I like it. Because we feel the movement, that's what I like. After you stretch this one, he actually wrote a format on it. And now, a little more on that second one, yeah? I wanted to say that before. It's the same at the beginning of the piece or wherever you have that. Again, no accent on this note. And then a little more with that B flat. And now this is written Not so don't disconnect the last three notes from right connect it all together and that's not so easy to do right since this was the end here, we didn't do an accent on the first one. We don't do an accent on the second one. That is not necessary here. See? You don't have to not accentuate that note or die off here. We don't need it because this isn't true here, this slur, right? It's ya da da di ya da di. So maybe also in the pacing, it's, it's hard to bring that out because you're slowing down. they sound disconnected, right? But if you go ta dum ba ti don't play this so far after the D that precedes it. T D E F and then we'll hear it like that. So that's really, I think that's very interesting because I don't hear that very often. I think it's something that we overlook in this piece. The way, you know, exactly this thing here, okay? This thing here, that's what I think tends to be overlooked. <laughs> you recognize Schumann's style in there. It's a very Schumann-esque sounding thing with these sort of horns and way he just goes to the C major chord. So if you can bring that out, I think that's good. The other thing we mentioned here was that the second, f 
fragment here of those three could be a little bit more than the first. <laughs> could do that. All right. I think that's a, a pack enough of information. So let's see. Uh, do we have any little questions here? Hi, everyone in the chat. Hi, Tim, you made it. Ah, wonderful. Obvious. Hi, obvious. Hi, Graham. I got your email for the master classes. Very good. Uh, Stephen J. Perkins, nice to see you all here. Uh, I'm redoing this one, by the way. I did it a few days ago, but there were just some things that I wanted to explain a little better, so that's why I'm here again. Okay. Uh, great P, great lesson. This piece, although not difficult technically, is so hard to interpret well. That is true. This piece is is about a level five piece. Okay, uh, well level five. Hold on, that's not true. It's a level six piece. I'm sorry, it's a level six piece. So that might, you know, situate it a little for you. And it's not necessarily an easy level six piece. You know, it's only one page. But you're right. It is not easy to interpret well. Part of the danger is that it's so well known. Yeah, that can be as well. So everyone plays it and it becomes like, maybe everyone plays it the same way or um, uh, it's a little harder to convince people uh, uh, of an interpretation when they've already heard something so many times, you know? How are you gonna make it original? But I think those little things like, you know, I don't hear a lot of people doing them. So if you get, if you got that in there, unless everyone starts watching this video and everyone does it, but it's clearly in there and it sounds better and it's showing better uh, the way, you know, Schumann put this piece together. It's showing the structure of the piece better like that. Uh, notation is a great help. I can imagine, yes, and Tim is, uh, to thank for that. So uh, great to hear you offering alternative interpretations as we go along, especially with the fingerings, pacing, and dynamics. Plenty of dreaming. Good. Thank you. I'm happy you like it. I uh, I think that you know should offer you a. Uh, I suppose it's you know I don't know if it's alternative or original, but to me it's what makes the most sense. So distort the rhythm a little bit. Sus give us a feeling of suspension on the long notes, especially every time it goes ya da 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 dee dee suspension, ti da da dee ya da da dee ta da da dee dum. That's a way of looking at it. You know, you know, it's like in a big wave in the ocean. There's little waves in that wave, you know. Or we could even say that you know the ocean has full of little waves, but it's all just the water, right? So you could look at the music in a way like that, you know, ta da da di da 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 di da. They're like different waves, parts of a wave, you know, but it's part of the same thing. I hope that makes sense. Okay, can I post the markup? Hey, that's a good idea. Yeah, uh, I'll see how I can do that. I think I'd just take a screenshot of it, and mm, I'll put it on my blog. There's actually a blog on the website that's not being used very often, but I'll, I'll do that. Thanks, Tim, that's a good idea. 